So Giorgia Maloney won the recent election in Italy, and she is going to be Italy's next prime minister. She formed a coalition government with two other parties, one being led by former Italian prime minister Silvio Berlusconi and the other by Salvini. Now, I'd like to show you a clip from one of her speeches. Potrei farne tante altre di queste domande. A monte c'è quella che ci facciamo oggi, perché la famiglia è un nemico? Perché la famiglia fa così paura? C'è una risposta unica per tutte queste domande. Perché ci definisce, perché è la nostra identità. Perché tutto quello che ci definisce in questo tempo è un nemico. Per chi vorrebbe che non avessimo più un'identità e che, fossero, che fossimo solamente schiavi, consumatori perfetti. E allora è sotto attacco l'identità nazionale, è sotto attacco l'identità religiosa, è sotto attacco l'identità di genere, è sotto attacco l'identità familiare. Non devo potermi definire italiana, cristiana, donna, madre, no. Io devo essere cittadino X, genere X, genitore 1, genitore 2, devo essere un numero. Perché quando sarò solamente un numero, quando non avrò più un'identità, quando non avrò più radici, beh, allora sarò lo schiavo perfetto in balia della grande speculazione finanziaria. Il consumatore perfetto. E questa è la ragione per la quale... Questa è la ragione per la quale oggi noi facciamo tanta paura. Questa è la ragione per la quale oggi questo appuntamento fa tanta paura. Perché noi non vogliamo essere dei numeri, noi siamo qui per dire che noi non siamo dei numeri, noi difenderemo il valore della persona umana, di ogni singola persona umana, perché ognuno di noi ha un codice genetico unico e irripetibile. E questo piaccia o no a del sacro. Lo difenderemo, difenderemo Dio, la patria e la famiglia, che fanno tanto schifo a qualcuno. Lo faremo per difendere la nostra libertà, perché noi non saremo mai schiavi e semplici consumatori in balia della speculazione finanziaria. Ecco la nostra missione, ecco perché oggi sono venuta qui. Scriveva Chesterton ormai più di un secolo fa, vediamo se, lo, se ve lo trovo, fuochi verranno attizzati per dimostrare che 2 più 2 fa 4, spade verranno sguainate per dimostrare che le foglie sono verdi in estate. Quel tempo è arrivato, signori, siamo pronti. Grazie. So you could see um, the, the text, the subtitles, they were backwards on, on my phone. But she talked about, that was a right-wing populist message. She talked about um, the, the having a native identity um, and, again, and being able to stand up against ca um, capitalist speculators as opposed to being a, a slave to them. Um, now, I don't necessarily like Georgia Maloney. Um, if, if you're after asking me what my politics are, I would consider myself to be um, a, a left-wing socialist, even though I am anti-imperialist, anti-NATO, anti-EU, and anti-vaccine mandate. But I think it's important to understand the, the, how that a message appeals to people. And I think what's happening in Germany right now is similar to what happened in, in the United States when Trump got elected. Um, when there are no good options to, other than fascism, the fascist ends up winning. And right now I'd like to show you a clip from uh, uh, Jimmy Dore talking about this. I think he lays it out pretty clearly. She is a back. So a lot, this is what people are saying, that she's a backlash. People voted for her as a, just as you pointed out, a backlash to the authoritarian COVID policies. Mm -hmm. And Georgia Maloney has. So this is what Peter Sweeten says. He says, Georgia Maloney has spent the last two years as the only politician in Italy fighting against the COVID passports. Now the Italian people just elected her as prime minister. So do you see how. Because our politicians in, in America, Democrats, have become so right-wing, so authoritarian, that they can make someone like DeSantis look appealing to people who think that he's fighting for civil rights because he's standing up against authoritarian around COVID. Same thing here. So there's 
the backlash to your authoritarianism. And what it that does, it's throwing peoples into the hands of what you call fascists. But to me, fighting COVID passports, that sounds like fascism to me. I, I, I can't go to a movie unless the, I get this thing. I can't go to eat at a restaurant. I can't get on a plane or a train. I can't travel. I can't do it in business. I can't do anything. Everyone that's panicking about this prime minister in Italy. Why did a lefty say, come out? Was that, if they're why, panicking, why, why did you have a lefty come out against COVID passports and you wouldn't have to worry about this happening? The problem is the person who's supposed to be the lefty is to the right of the person who you say is a fascist. That's your fucking problem. Same thing in America. Joe Biden is to the right of people you're calling fascists. Joe Biden is the authoritarian. Joe Biden is the fascist. Joe Biden is the one who's screwing over workers, students, and any citizen in America at the behest of Wall Street or a corporation. That's So the problem is you don't have a left party anymore. They became right-wingers. Guess what? So here's at the Atlantic, they call... So, as Jimmy laid out, you have neoliberal politicians who support authoritarian vaccine mandates uh, support and support NATO, and that's how you end up getting these right-wing politicians elected. And Maloney is a fake populist, and now that she's been elected, she plans on... Uh, she, she's a fake populist, because now that she plans on getting elected, she plans on supporting NATO in Ukraine, actually. And so she's not actually anti-NATO. I think it's good that she campaigned on vaccine passports, but on the issue of against vaccine passports, but on the issue of NATO, she is not good. Um, and and yeah, this is what happens when 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 at, there are no good options when you have these neoliberal politicians who support these authoritarian vaccine mandates. You end up getting a fascist elected, and regardless of what fake leftists who are funded by the State Department tell you. And I think this is why I, this is this is why in America and around the world we need a real leftist f candidate who's going to fight that for Medicare for all, who's going to fight for a living wage, who's going to be against NATO, who's going to fight against authoritarian vaccine mandates and and we need and, and this is why you need to break. I think the only way I think we're going to be able to do that is to break away from the two party system. Uh, that is the only you can't count on the squad to do that because they're corrupt and sold out. So that that's how that's the our only way to overcome the fascists. Anyway, there you have it.